So it's time for another limited budget food challenge and again we're going to be using a budget of one pound. Today's challenge is to bake a cake using only one pound. There are a few other restrictions which I'll talk about in a moment, but let's just get one thing out of the way before we start. Yes, you can go to a store and buy a cake for a pound, of course you can. And in fact, you can get some quite nice cakes, it looks like, for a pound. So at this point, you might just be asking, what's the point of all of this? Well, you might very well ask, what's the point of birds? What is the point of birds? We just don't know. Now, in all seriousness, this is a thinking exercise. This is about setting some limits and then trying to use creativity to overcome those limits. It's a technique that I learned from one of my heroes, Edward de Bono. And in this book, he talks about thinking exercises where you can arbitrarily remove one essential element of a thing and then try and reinvent it without that element. And it's a really, really useful technique and it's a very transferable skill. And so that's the point of what we're doing today. This is a mental exercise. So I have to bake a cake, but I'm not going to allow myself to use any of the conventional cake ingredients. So eggs, flour, butter, sugar, I cannot buy those ingredients on their own. The budget probably wouldn't stretch to one of each of those things anyway, but I'm going to let myself buy things that contain those ingredients, but not those ingredients themselves. Secondly, I can't just go and buy a bag of cake mix or anything that's intended for making cakes. So I've got to go and find things that are not traditionally intended for making cakes and see if I can make a cake out of them. I'm going to allow myself use of all of the kitchen facilities. That includes all of the cooking and food preparation facilities, including the electricity and gas to run the appliances and including the things that I would normally use when I'm baking a cake, but not ingredients. We're going to allow foraging in this one, but we're not going to allow the urban foraging this time. And one other final rule is the reduced section in the supermarket will not be out of bounds, but I will only be allowed to buy one item from the reduced section. So let's go shopping. So those are the purchased ingredients and for our foraged ingredients I'm going to add some apples. Now I got these apples, they are fallers, they've been there all winter. I went down to the church in our village and behind the church, in the churchyard, there is a, an apple tree that's been planted in memory of someone called Muriel. So I didn't know Muriel during her life but her relatives have decided to honour her life in planting this apple tree here for her and what a lovely thing and the apples are still survived through the winter and so I took a few of those apples. Now just before anybody goes and gets all uptight about me stealing apples from a church I did ask for and receive permission for this. So let's get to the kitchen and see what we can make with all of this. Okay so let's see what we can do with these ingredients. Now the Hollandaise sauce mix says to make it up with 300 ml of warm milk and then bring it to the simmer. I don't have any milk and we can't add it so I'm actually going to use water and I'm going to use 200 ml and we'll see how we go with that. And hopefully this will act as a kind of egg substitute. Who knows? <laughs> it smells quite savoury. But I think we're going to get away with that because we've got the ginger nuts, which is quite a strong spice. So I think we'll be okay. Let's get going on our other ingredients. Now I'm going to blend up the biscuits and the bread in my food blender. Okay, that's got to be enough bread crumbs. Okay, I'm going to change my mind about this and top that up to 300 mil. 
going to put that in there. And there's not too much moisture there for this amount of ingredients, but we want to give that a really good mix. Now at the moment that's not looking all that promising as a cake mix. In fact it's rather doughy looking, but we'll see. We'll see, this is just an experiment. So that's come together into a sort of doughy mixture. Next, our carrot. So, just wash that. I'm gonna grate it straight in there. Now I'm sure some pedants are gonna say, oh, you can have carrot, you can have carrot cake. But this is not a main ingredient in this cake. This is just, well, main purpose of this was actually just to use up the last three pence. I've just broken my spatula. Oh well, let's uh, switch to something else. Okay, that's good. Now the apples. Now these apples are a bit various in quality, so we are going to have to do give them a good wash first and cut off some nasty bits. Okay, so yeah, some of these apples are a bit problematic. Let's just see what they're like. They're per perfectly okay inside though. So I'm gonna try and cut off the worst bits before I peel, which, oops, let's just rescue this little bug. So I'm just gonna cut out some of these bad bits. Normally I would peel first, but I feel like I need to get the bad, some of the bad bits out so that we don't end up spreading any dirt and contamination around the better parts of the apple. These smell fantastic. They are quite mealy in texture at this point, but they actually smell superb. So just going to do the same with these other apples. Give them a peel, cut out any bad bits. That's about three of those apples. That may be enough. Let's run with that for the moment and see if it turns out okay. So I'm going to blend that up in the food processor. Okay, so the apple pieces going into our mix. I've got the oven preheating now up to 180 centigrade, which is about 350 Fahrenheit. Let's give that a good blend together. It does smell like cake mix. So, you know, we've got reason to be hopeful here. So, into our lined cake tin. Spread that out. And as soon as the oven's up to temperature, we're going to bake that and see what we get. What kind of cook would I be if I didn't taste the cake mix? It tastes like cake mix. Oven's up to temperature. There's our cake mix. Here we go. And we're going to give that 25 minutes. It's been actually about 45 minutes in the oven. It hasn't risen as much as I hoped it would, but it's got a little bit of spring to it, so hopefully we're okay. It is cooked, so I'm just gonna release it from the pan and we'll put it on a cooling rack and we'll see what we've ended up with. Well, <laughs> I've gotta say, it feels pretty dense, but it is quite soft and cakey, so Maybe, I don't know. Let's let it cool down a little bit and then we'll try a slice. At the moment of truth, let's give this a taste. So it's still quite warm, but I kind of feel like that might be the best time to have a piece. That's 
it's quite crumbly. Uh, it's a bit doughy, I would say as well. It's gone a bit. Sti <laughs> it's a bit sticky inside. I think maybe it just needs a bit longer. But let's have a look at what we've got. Well, it has baked up, but it stayed very moist inside. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Okay, flavor-wise, great. Texture, not great. Texture is just really, really doughy and almost like uncooked cake. And I can't believe this needed longer in the oven than that. So I think it just hasn't set and that's probably because we didn't have real eggs. So there we go, it tastes fine. And why wouldn't it? I mean, it's got a whole packet of ginger biscuits in there, so there's plenty of flavor, plenty of sugar. Apple and carrot and ginger actually seems to go quite well together, but it just hasn't baked into a cake. So, I don't know whether you can call that a success. I don't think you can, but it was an interesting experiment and it's given me some ideas. I think it's more like a bread pudding than a cake, but yeah, we can't really call this a success. I'm probably still gonna upload this video though anyway, because failures can be interesting too. Let me know in the comments if you can think of a way to do this better within the constraints that I set. Hasty addendum, we had some friends pop in this afternoon and I had a chance to subject them to this experimental cake. Now, after it's cooled down, it's actually quite a different cake. It's a lot like bread pudding, which is makes perfect sense because it's made mostly from bread. But, so, my willing participants in this trial all had a little taste of this and actually they all finished a whole slice of it. And we all agreed the flavor is actually quite superb. The flavor of the ginger and the apple really, really works. The texture is just a bit weird. The texture, I don't know, you can see it. It's like, well, I think the consensus was it's a bit like Play-Doh. So I'm gonna call this a partial success. Maybe I'm being generous to myself. I did try cutting a slice and toasting it but it hasn't really stopped it being quite rubbery. Really, the problem here is the lack of any raising agent. There's no baking powder in here. The, the egg that was in here was just egg yolks from the hollandaise sauce, so there isn't even any egg white to trap air and puff up. So, yeah, we're gonna call this a partial success. The flavors are good. It was an interesting experiment. It was fun to try. So I hope you found that interesting too. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.